So, um, and I know you've done videos like kind of, uh, giving tips about OnlyFans. So what, what would be some of like your biggest tips for somebody new who's looking to get on the platform? Somebody new. So I made that video because when I came on to OnlyFans, um, I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out the platform. It's confusing. Like even now there's like a feature that you're not aware of, you know, yeah, because it's like, it, you really have to like go and explore the platform to figure things out. But, um, that video that I made mostly talks about like making the welcome message and like what kind of services you can offer. And I always give the, the caution of like, you know, if you're, if you, if you're new and you want to start an only fans, like don't just like think about it for a long time because it's kind of a big decision depending on what kind of content you're going to do. Like I started, I had my, my, I mean, my family only found my Instagram and they were mad back in the day, you know, it's like, they didn't talk to me for like between six months and a year. So I feel like almost every new creator who decides that they're going to do this goes through that sort of period. Mm -hmm. So my biggest piece of advice is like, you know, really think about it. Think about like, if you're okay with your family finding out and like, think about like why you want to do it. Like, do you think you're going to want to do it just because you, you think it's easy money because it's really not like you only make money when you make new content. And so you constantly have to be making new content using your body. Is that something you're comfortable with? Is that something that you want to do? And in the beginning, I didn't really think about it that way. It just kind of evolved and progressed from, you know, me taking a bikini photo on Instagram into me doing, you know, like real porn type content with other performers. But yeah, I think that's my, probably my biggest piece of advice is if you're, if you're new is just like really, Think about how you want to spend your days. And if you do want to spend your days taking a bunch of photos of yourself and scheduling all your content. And like, that's what you like, cause you have to sign up for like a real, it's like kind of like a real job. It takes as much time as it sometimes. Yeah. I think that's a big mistake that a lot of girls make is that they think that, especially now, like in this only fans gold rush that we're experiencing yeah, that you can just jump on the platform and all of a sudden you're going to be making millions of dollars and it's, it's, that's not true. The platform's super flooded. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to have a pretty decent social media following. Yeah. I would think even then to push your, to push people there. And yeah, it's a lot of work. You got to interact with your fans. Almost um, all of my DMS are, I made an only fans, but I have no subscribers. Can you please help me? Like yeah, almost every single one of my messages. So, you know, it looks like a get rich quick scheme, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's work just like everything else. Yeah. So, um, unless of course you're Bella Thorne and you've uh, signed up and then you've made a million dollars, 24 hours. I just can't believe that she said <laughs> that. Like, I don't, I don't see the point of telling everyone how much money you made in a pandemic when there's like over 50 million people without jobs. Yeah, it is. It does seem to feel a little bit, uh, like showboating. But she's and, not the only one who's done it. Like a lot of people join OnlyFans and I guess they're also shocked about how much money they can make and they yeah. put it out there, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It does feel a little bit unfair. I mean, it got her all the headlines, but then of course, for those of you who aren't aware and if you aren't, I'm surprised because it's fucking all over the news. Um, so Bella made a million dollars in 24 hours, supposedly on her OnlyFans, but she did it by misleading people we will say into the kind of content that she was selling she was selling a picture for two hundred dollars which was a locked photo so you can't see it unless you pay for it mm -hmm. and she said that it was a nude photo and um turns out it was nude technically but it was implied nude which is not what people were expecting so what happened was a lot of people charged their money back and, um, the problem with chargebacks is that it's actually really bad for credit card processors. A lot of websites go through a lot of lengths to avoid chargebacks. Um, because if you get a ton of chargebacks, Visa or MasterCard can pull your account. And that is absolutely devastating for a website because that's your payment processor. Um, I think American Express is not accepted on OnlyFans. I think they, they pulled out. So, mm. so if you lose your Visa and your MasterCard accounts, it's a huge problem. So chargebacks are a big issue for websites. So supposedly OnlyFans immediately put a cap on how much people were allowed to charge for messages 
or get tipped, which interfered with a lot of other sex workers and how much they were charging for special custom videos and things like that. But um, I, I, I try not to, I try to like sit back and kind of wait for the information to come out mm -hmm. rather than like jump to conclusions immediately. So I've just been kind of like watching what what's happening. And supposedly OnlyFans is saying that this cap that they put on is temporary and it's not specifically due to Bella. Is that I kind of wonder if they were like planning on doing this and then they kind of just did it at, at a bad time. Mm. Um because I, mean, I am a little bit surprised that there isn't a cap on there because yeah. that is something that a lot of websites would do simply to avoid the charge back issue. Yeah, any because sort of again, issues. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I got in trouble for speaking on it, but I spoke on it like before the stuff about this fake documentary came out and the mm -hmm. stuff about her scamming came out. I just think that like any, I mean, it's, it's, obviously the, the, the platform is flooded with sex workers, but it's not it's not a, it's not a porn platform. It's like a platform mm -hmm. for any influencer to sell privatized social media content to their fans. And so I kind of was commenting on the sort of territorialism that was going on about the platform, mm -hmm. because I think the more people who have only fans accounts, the better it is because it just see like a lot of the problems that I had with my private Snapchat website was like, is this a scam? Is, am I going to get like, what's going to be written on my credit card statement, you know? And mm -hmm. so the more well-known a website becomes and the most more trusted a website becomes, I think it could be better for every user on the platform. And I don't think that Bella Thorne having an OnlyFans takes away from me having an OnlyFans because we're, com we're selling completely different products to completely mm -hmm. different people, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, of course, when you're, misrepresenting what you're selling. Yeah. And that's um, never okay. Never. That's never right, right. okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wonder if like this really, it, the changes really are because of her or if they are just what they were going to already do, like as a safety mm -hmm. precaution for the website. But um, I mean, I'm still of the opinion that any, any in big influencer who wants to join the platform should join the platform and I welcome mm -hmm. them. I just don't think that anyone should scam, obviously. And I think that yeah. people, just because I was in support of her joining, took it to mean that I was in support of her scamming, which I wasn't. And I and I commented that like days before all the other stuff came out. She could have joined and never said anything about a documentary. It wouldn't have mattered. You yeah. know, it just, she didn't have right. to say all that. Right. Yeah, that was a little bit. Weird, and she could have also too. just like not said she could have she could have actually sent a nude photo or just said I'm not doing nude at all and charged less for her photos and yeah. not told everyone how much she makes which is, it just seems like tasteless. Yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of it seems it feels like she definitely went about it the wrong way. I think that like what a lot of people's concern is in the community and I totally totally understand this is just that like there's a history of like sex workers getting on a specific platform, generating a lot of traffic because of who they are, because of like the public's interest in it, and then being pushed off of that platform once that platform has reached a certain level where they have a lot of like mainstream traffic, or maybe they have stockholders that have come in and they want nothing to do with porn mm -hmm. anymore. You know, Tumblr, I mean, Instagram really, uh, Snapchat, all of those things. And I think that like in this pandemic, especially OnlyFans has become this incredible resource for all of these sex workers to become independent and to be able to make their own money and finally feel like they have some financial freedom and they have hope for their career yeah. and their future and they don't have to slave and they don't have to work for companies they don't want to work for anymore. So I think it felt like it was this amazing gift they've been given and then it's been like snatched away and that they might lose it like they've lost these other platforms. I mean, you talked about, you know, your Snapchat getting deleted like 10 yeah. times. And I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but I can totally understand everybody's trepidation with that. Yeah, I understand everyone's early. fear around that. I mean, I don't think Snapchat was, Snapchat was never approving of porn being on their platform. No. It was all done low key, like, you know, breaking the rules sort of thing. I do get that, you know, I, I have a deal, I have the problem where I get, deleted off um or things removed from my instagram all the time before 
back when I first started my Instagram page, I would get my page shut down multiple times a year. So I understand the concern there. I don't, I mean, I think that, I don't think that we're really ever going to be pushed off of OnlyFans, but I don't think that OnlyFans is going to promote itself as a sex worker platform, even if sex workers built it. Yeah, that's true. You know, you're right, actually, because when you, when you think about it, if you look at the terms of service on Snapchat, I think it specifically says like, no, it's completely illegal by their terms. Yeah. And then on OnlyFans, they have like, a list of like what is okay to post no peeing no pooping yeah but like i can't even type in the word choke like there are specific rules for things that you can do and cannot do you know you can't use the word diapers on there either you can't use the word lactate but diapers is weird Mm -hmm. yeah diapers Diapers. people because people are like oh pedophilia i get i guess so um anything any words associated with a baby maybe are just like a no-go yeah yeah um, so yeah, you're right. But, uh, so I, I, I hope, and I would think, I mean, look, like OnlyFans is, let's, let's be serious. OnlyFans is making most of their fucking money off of sex workers. Absolutely. So if they, you know, even if you just want to look at them as like some greedy corporate entity, like they're not going to drop their main source of income, but I can yeah. totally understand like people's fear around that. And, you know, like just in general, the, the, the adult work community has been has been so like stigmatized and marginalized and pushed off this platform and pushed off that platform. Mm-hmm. Like, I can totally understand everyone's concerns around it. But you're right. I just don't ever want platform. I just don't ever want anyone to think like, oh, Holly Randall has an OnlyFans, therefore my OnlyFans will suffer. And and because I feel right. like there's so much already so much competition between girls and between women, and I don't want that narrative to be pushed. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode, and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you wanna listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.